a welcome to Royal Ascot Rewind. Myself and Ruby Walsh are joined by the legend that is Johnny Murta. We asked Johnny to pick out 10 Royal Ascot moments that he wants to talk us through. So Johnny, the first one we're going to look at is Ridgewood Pearl 1995. So before we talk about and look at the race, can you just kind of set the scene a little bit? 95, are you a kid? black and white. <laughs> it's, not quite, it's not quite that old. What age are you actually in 95? I was 25. 25, wow. Um, didn't ride her in the Irish Guineas because uh, the Aga Khan had a horse in the Irish Guineas and I spoke to John Ox, he said, no, he says, you ride for the Aga Khan in the Guineas. I says, but Ridgewood Pearl's going to win the Irish Guineas. He says, yeah, but he says, you ride for the Aga Khan. I said, can I ride her next to him? He says, you're stable jockey. You'll be riding her for the rest of the year, win, lose or draw. So, rock up to Ascot, bit of pressure on. Christy Roche rode her, rode her well, won the Irish Guineas well and had, had never ridden a winner in, in, in Royal Ascot before. So, she was second favourite. Uh, I was back on her, group one, big group one of the, of the, of the week, the coronation, and yeah, I was feeling the pressure that day, so Paddy. Would you, would you have been nervous? Because I mean, I know obviously later on in your career when you've ridden loads of group ones, part of the advantage like you or Ruby and for himself over jumps would, would have is that against the younger, less experienced lads, you kind of have, there's something there, you know you've done it before. So at this stage, are you like, are you cacking yourself in the morning or? Yeah, you would. You'd be thinking a lot about it. You'd be going through the, the race over and over again, wondering, you know. The, the one thing that people fall into the trap of, the, wondering what can go wrong. I never, I never dwelt on that too much. I was always thinking, right, this is what I'm going to do. Kind of try and make it happen this way for myself. But yeah, you'd be, you'd be just hoping everything would go well. And as I said, uh, hadn't ridden much at Ascot, but got a feel for the place over a couple of years. Had a couple of rides there, but really liked it. And I thought we had a real chance. As rides go, it was a pretty straightforward ride. I took no chances. I was on the best filly. But the whole build up to it beforehand, yeah. It was, Let's it was have a look. Let's have a look. Can you watch this? You still had big decisions to make. Ah, listen, the biggest decision I had to make was to either go at the, the two and a half or the two, and I think I let her go pretty early. But did she not pull very hard early, or is that just my. Or is that you, you as not being as. Uh, beautiful a jockey as you were later on in your career or me just not been a good judge of looking at her horse like there it looks like she wants to go faster now yeah and I wasn't taking any chances you know when you're riding these favourites in these big races just give yourself the best chance I, I used to just try and keep it simple you know there you are box seat Ascot is a great place to be either third or fifth on the inside is a great place to be in Ascot yeah but now you're following the Shadwell or Hamdan Al Maktoum at the time, pacemaker, and Willie Carson is right behind you on the first string. Sure, up here now you move out slightly and Willie Carson darts through on your inside. So for me, now you have a decision. You have to now keep Willie Carson in the pocket he's ridden into by making sure the pacemaker doesn't drift. And you do. You go forward and get onto the pacemaker and keep him in. Yeah, well, isn't probably as I said, if, if I was doing it now, I'd have kept that my position there and moved out a bit later, but I just didn't want to take any chances. I knew she was a filly that would stay well. We were a little bit worried about the ground, so we didn't want it to turn into a sprint. Uh, but as you can see here, I'm turning in, I'm absolutely cantering. I just nurse her down to the two, and um, the rest is history. But as I said, the whole occasion, the owner was a great character, Sean Coughlin. I think it was John Ox's first uh, Royal Ascot winner. So, you know, it was, it was a great occasion, and... You know, sometimes you see the great celebrations, but I think it's more relief than anything else. Joe, you know one thing I noticed about the race, actually, it's probably a difference from back then to now, is that the commentator never mentioned your name once. It was all the horse, didn't mention a jockey's name, where now it all be And under Johnny Murta... He didn't know it, Joe. He's probably, never uh, ridden a winner in Ascot. Yeah, JP Murta, whoever this fella is. But do you know what I mean? Because, like, and actually, like, to be fair, you should be getting the credit. So it's much better nowadays, I guess. And then Lester Piggott, they might have said, oh, it's Lester or Willie Carson or Pat Edry or something, but... Uh, but yeah, I just noticed that. But yeah, so it was, you say it was straightforward. I thought actually that maybe you'd be saying to me, she pulled hard, I maybe went too soon, but got away with it. No, it was pretty straightforward, Paddy. Uh, when I'd be riding a lot of these good horses, I would keep it as straightforward and keep it as simple as possible. You're on the best horse. If it means going in or going out, unless he was one you wanted to come late, I'd just play it safe, come out, win the race. You know, and that's 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 the way I did it. I, and, she, and she went on and won the Moulin, the Breeders' Cup mile as well. So would she be one of the greats that you've ridden? Like, I'm sure you've ridden some plenty of good She ones. would be one of the greats. She was a great filly. She was 520 kilos. She was big. She was strong. She loved the cut in the ground. And uh, four group ones that year. She was the highest rated three-year-old filly right up until Jesse's filly came along there recently. So another master training performance by J.M. Ox.
So Johnny, jumping forward five years now, uh, you picked one in a handicap, a mere handicap, Katika, the Duke of Edinburgh. Yeah, it was, listen, it was one of those races, you know, great plans. You sit there and you talk to John Ox and the Aga Khan and he's after having two winners that day, His Highness, he won a couple of races. I think one train by Michael Stout and one train in France. So we thought this had a really good chance. And I, I spoke to John Ox, says, yeah, just typical Aga Khan. She stays well, jump, sit third, uh, keep it simple. She'll stay well. And it just goes to show you things do not work out well. Like after a furlong, I went got down to Swinley Bottom. I said, what am I doing here? How could I be, how could I be here? But in fairness to the filly, um, she, when she got by one, you know sometimes when they get by one and one starts to drop, dropping in front of you, she just... They start picking up. But a mile and a half in Ascot's a tricky start, Johnny, because it runs downhill for four furlongs to Swinley Bottom. So they can gather up a lot of speed. But when you get to Swinley Bottom and you're as far back as you're going to be now in a minute, you can't make ground for a while either because you're starting to climb. No, again, it, 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 the, the Ascot is, is, is a great track and it's one of those weeks you can, have, you can have a great week or it can go horribly badly wrong for you. You cannot go wide up the hill. You have to, you have to stay in. And I stayed in and I got the splits. And, um, you know, it was... Did you it, know that though? I mean, you know that now because like you've ridden a, a, as many winners at Ascot as any, probably more than anyone, but did you know that then? when you're pretty inexperienced at, at Ascot and you're, did you know I can't be wide here? Or did you just learn, is that track craft you picked up with experience? Or? I picked it up with experience. And I used to watch the good jockeys. Like Canaan used to be fifth on the fence. Pat Edry used to always stay in. They'd never come out. You know, the bigger days you have to get a bit more relaxed. You can't panic. And as I said, you can't win the race from the, from the mile to the half mile in Ascot, but you can lose it. But is this your fault now? You're meant to be sitting third and you're sitting third last. Is that your fault or just how it panned out? You couldn't help it. Just went so fast in front, I couldn't help it. I, you know. So you were saying, I, no, no matter what the instructions are, they're just going too fast. It's the you bad, are the where wrong. You are and you have, to, you now have to ride this race. Yeah, this is this is this is something you never, you didn't plan for. You didn't plan for this. It's like if you made a mistake at the first and suddenly you're at the back of the field. Yeah, it often happens. And people wonder, well, how did you get there? So they went so hard. Johnny ends up where he ends up. But it's to have the balls to then ride this race yeah. and not try and revert to his original plan. And, and make up loads of that's ground. That's the difference. Yeah. And you can see there, that's a half a mile out. Everything's pushing along. Like, Ascot's a tough track. They ain't going to stay. So are you I'm confident? Just, I thought I had a chance. I thought I had a chance here turning in. Uh, I was in a good posse. I had saved a bit of ground around the bend and it was just a matter of getting through. So, um, looking What's for the a... What's process now? I'm going to try and get out to get through or pick my way through the middle? I didn't want to pull out on the bend. I sometimes think if you pull out an ascot, you're too wide. You know, you can mm. sometimes slingshot it out. I think, get round here and now decide to go out. You know what I mean? You're after saving a bit of ground. And in all fairness, I was staying on good. There was a horse in front of me. I think he attack, attack, he rode it. Okay. And it kicked clear. And I knew I had the rest of them covered. But I was just wondering, would I get him? He just... He had a few lengths to make up, and in all fairness to the filly, uh, you know, she got there well in the end. She got there. It's a great feeling knowing you're going to get there. Like, even if it's only a few strides before you do it. Yeah, you do, you do. And there's, you know, there is times, you know, as I said, I thought I was getting there. Bit of a battle. But, yeah. As snug as you like, you stop riding just yeah. the line. Just, yeah. just getting down for the picture. You knew for about three strides there you were going to win. <laughs> well, I was hoping, you know, I was hoping. But that just goes to show you, you can have great plans. And on the big day, you know, you leave those owners telling them what's going to happen. Yeah. I'd say they were standing stand wondering what's going on here. Yeah. And it's always nice. But isn't that like, I mean, okay, ultimately the two of you became champions. And I guess that's one of the reasons why you became champions because you're able to be brave enough to to cha like change plans mid-race or whatever. I mean, that's the that's that's why you're on the big books type of thing. I suppose that people trusted you. Yeah. They trusted you. They knew, they knew like, you know, must must be something going on because he said he was going to do this and something must have happened that he's not doing what he said he'd do. And they trusted you. But if you're a young jockey and you're starting off yeah. and that happens and you don't win... Why didn't you? Why like, I'm a trainer now. Well, oh, you told me you were going to make the run and what happened? Yeah. So, it, it's, 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 yeah. It's always good when you win. And did you prefer, Ruby, did you prefer getting up at the line or leading from the front and just holding on? Didn't bother me once I got to the line in front. Yeah. Whether I'd made the run or I came from the back. But I, I agree with Johnny, it's to have the courage to trust your instinct. But then when it doesn't go right, you have to own that mistake too. Mm. And be confident enough that if this doesn't work out, that I go back in, put, stick my hands up, and hopefully these, these people will understand and have my back. And Johnny had that in John Ox.
and funny because you you, uh, you had big owners as well and you had big owners through your career and there's there's loyalty both ways isn't there like i mean you, you do want to win for certain owners i'm sure don't you because you know uh. they've put trust in you and everything or listen i think you you want to win for every for me i wanted to win every race i wanted to win for every owner because it was so special to them you know like his highness that's having two winners that day if she finished second it mightn't have been too bad if it was someone like your parents have one horse for Royal Ascot. It's pretty special, it's I guess. It's pretty special. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, so, uh, no, I, 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 I treated them all like, this is Derby Day. Because my wife had said to me, she says, it's Derby Day for somebody. That's why you have to be on, ga on point every day, not just the Royal Ascots and the weekends, every day, because it's somebody's Derby. And there's some story behind that horse, whether they fold it or they bred it, do you know, there's stories behind those, yeah. all those and horses. the lesser the horse, and in a handicap like that, most horses only get one chance. Yeah. The good ones, the real good ones, if you do something wrong, they will get another day. The other horses don't tend to get another day. So that's what makes them more important. Yeah. Well, funny, speaking about other days, another day at Ascot, Gold Cup 2002. Set the scene for this one. Um, Royal Rebel. Royal Rebel. I had ridden him the year before. And, and he won. And he won. And he hadn't win. He hadn't. Yeah, he hadn't been mapped since. But uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the previous year had he been mapped in the run up to it? Like it's he was going okay the year before. Right. He was going okay the year before. But the the distance brought out the best in him. You know, he needed he needed two and a half mile to get into gear. He was so lazy. There you go. But before this race, I looked at his form and I said, "This lad is not doing a stroke." You're Adam there. You're you're. You haven't gone a furlong. And you've hit him three times. Do you think you're AP or what? Listen, I, he was so lazy. He was a very lazy horse, right? And um, I got up in him in the parade ring and I left my legs out of the irons and I kept kicking him in the belly. And he just kind of looked back at me and he kind of, I says, I've got his attention now because you, it was very hard to get his attention. He was lazy, real, real lazy horse. But I gave him, ah, oh, you, come on. And he just looked back and I said, right, I have his attention now. So when I jumped out of the stalls, I wanted to be close up and I wanted to get him to travel because he never travelled in his races. So that's why I motivated him early. And I had Persian Punch in front of me, who I knew was going to stay well. And I was like down the back straight. If you roll it on to the nine mark, to the- to yeah, fast forward a bit, yeah. To, to the mile and one, I gave him a slap down the shoulder and I looked up and I seen nine furlongs and I said, Johnny, it's going to be a long way home from here. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a long way Badger, home Badger, from here. Had your weed mixed everything. <laughs> so it was, it, it was one of those, Tough, hardy, didn't give, he, he, he was giving you about 80% of what he could give you. If he was around now, he wouldn't win a race because you'd have, as I said, three, three whips are gone already. He's like watching AP on Dino's Bino. It's, it's a similar yeah. sort of thing on the flat to what AP used to do with him over jumps. Like, you know the abilities there is to get his concentration, get him motivated, get him forward, but then you have to be as committed. And for any jockey to start pushing as far out as Johnny's going to start pushing this fella, He's as committed as the horse was. Yeah, and, that, and so is it. Is it a case of like the horse kind of throwing his eyes up to heaven? Okay, fine, we'll do it today, type of thing. That, that was him. Like that was him. Yeah. And I was lucky in the straight. I was lucky in the straight that they came around me, and they just motivated him. I remember Pat Smullen came on my. He rode Vinny Roan. He came came on my outside, and the Tory came on my, my my inside, and 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 he just got in between them, and he just grew another leg. Yeah. And the AP used to do that deliberately. He would drift off on a horse like Dino's Bino, get in the middle of the track to get people coming both sides of them. I used to never do it. I always wanted to be on one side and make them come at me, but AP used to do what Johnny was doing. Like, throughout the Swindley bottom, this is the stiffest part of Ascot. Johnny's pulled his whip into his right, and he's starting to send this horse. You're going to turn this into a point to point. Yeah, it, as I said, he had real staying power, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to draw, draw them into a battle, because if, if something came to him and they quickened by him, uh, it was all over because if, if a horse got it's a horse got a length in front of him he just jack it in like I'm you know really slapping him down the shoulder I'm really motivating him here but in fairness to him as I said he was a horse with lots of ability he was giving you 80% I'm even I'm even banging the horse beside me I'm kind of bumping him that's all on purpose like that's just, just to try and motivate him some yeah. bit of a way you know like he's leaning in there now and I said all I'm thinking now is do not let anybody get by you quick you know, you, you, I had the, the guy on the inside covered, I felt, mm -hmm. and I was just waiting for them to come to come at me. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be 
going all guns blazing. Are you tired at this stage? I'm starting to get tired now, all right. I'm starting to get tired. Um, but again, it doesn't come into it. Like this is this is Ascot June. I'm at as fit as I've ever been. Yeah, but you're, you don't ride over two and a half miles usually, and you don't push along. Whenever you're riding, you don't push along for a mile. No, but I, listen, I, I, I would have been fit. As I said, the yeah. two horses come to me here. They look beat, to be fair. Yeah. And they didn't get by him. They gave him another chance. And then, you know, that's the kind of, that's the kind of horse he was. It was, listen, it was uh, tough. I got another... <laughs> Another seven days suspension for that one. Really? So you used to get because you got suspended the previous year. Yeah, too, didn't you? Okay. I missed the Irish Derby weekend for two years in a row because of him. Right. I think I hit him twelve. 12 Did you missed the Derby winner, no? I didn't miss the Derby winner, thank God. But uh, I remember going into the steward's room and the steward says to me, "Johnny, you know the rules." I says, "Yeah, but Mr. Savile, who was Peter Savile, who was standing beside me, he told me to be." You know, he was chairman of the. He was chairman. <laughs> The BHA I or says, whatever, yeah. He yeah. told me to be aggressive on him. And he goes, Well, I didn't tell you to break the rules, Johnny. I says, Well, okay. So they gave me seven days. Right. But um he would not have won two gold cups without being hard on him. Without and hard, yeah. I think um he responded he responded very, very well, doing eighty percent of what he could do. He was he was he was a horse with a lot of ability. Okay. Did they ever try him in headgear? They had headgear, they had everything on him. He used to just give up with the headgear. Because he couldn't see them coming. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was one of those ones. That was the way to ride him. That's what you had to do. And if you're going to win... Or would you have been tempted not to ride him, like coming into the race? If you had a choice of riding Finney Row, you would have got off him like Oh, listen, it, 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 like, I had this discussion with my agent after it. He goes, Johnny, you're after missing two derby weekends. We'll have to be very, very careful in future if you have a good ride in the derby. we better off not riding him. I said, well, it's better off not riding him in two-mile races or mile-and-a-half races, which he used to competing because it says he's not going to win them and we're only going to get in trouble on them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, listen, you worked hard for your payday that day. I guess this is one of your more easy ones. This is Choisir. Yeah, good, good story about this one is the Coventry Stakes is the race before the King stands. And I was riding a two-year-old in the stalls and he reared over me. And I, he, he reared back and he, I hurt my back. So I'm down at the st stalls. I, I can't ride in the Coventry. And... The, the doctor is with me and he's checking me out. Yeah, I, says, I think I'm okay, I think I'm okay. And darting pain in me back. And by the time I get round, down to the, the way room, because it's a long way back, the doctor, yeah. a long way back, um, Mick Canan has the colours of Swazir on. He says, are you riding this lad? Because it's going spare. <laughs> now, I, my back was fairly <laughs> sore, but there was no way... <laughs> <laughs> there was no way of letting Mick Cadan ride him anyway. He was, he was very thoughtful to help you out by taking the, taking the colours and everything. Well, it took me so long to get up. Everyone had weighed out. I was, you know, everyone had weighed out. I was back in. It was 10 minutes before the race. And Mick said, are you, are you riding this or not? Just the, he's over from Australia. Yeah. Unknown quantity. Yeah, he's looking round for a jockey. Mick Cadan is available in the, in the weight room. So I said, oh, no, no, I'm OK, Mick. I'm OK. So I put on the colours. I weigh out. And I get out to the... Parade ring. Way out. So you go back in to put your cap on the helmet and you're thinking, Jeez, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> why, why did I weigh out? <laughs> but would you be the that same? That crossing your mind? Listen, I... I, I was, no, I, they started to drop. I, I it's said, not quite said, back up yet. I said, G give us a cup of tea there. So I had a cup of tea and a couple of sugars and I kind of got a bit of a rush going. And I get out to the parade ring and I see this thing walking around the, the parade ring. Oh, so you hadn't... You'd never, ne never, never seen it before. Never the horse. Never seen it before. He had eye shields on him, which we never seen before. And I seen what are they like sunglasses like? They're like the, sh the eye shields. They're kind of blinkers with a big me wire mesh in front of them. I seen them in Australia. They, right they okay. ride out the difficult horses in Australia with them. It calms them down a bit. And I see Schwazier. There's a little old guy leading them. He's doing, he's doing half speed around the parade. The, the horse is just dragging him around. <laughs> And I'm going, oh my God. But was he a beast? Did he look a beast? Oh, like, like he was twice he's, as... Like he's thinking, like, how am I going to get this to yeah. start? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not worried about coming back. <laughs> he's thinking, me back, it's going to bolt to the start of me. He's only worried about getting down on So I, get, I, got, I got to meet the trainer and he says, Johnny, this is a good horse. He said, but he's got two speeds. He's got slow and very fast. I said, okay. So I get on him. I get his head and over... Can you feel, I, the, you can oh, feel the strength hey, again? I get his head over the rail and I trot him to the start. And I'm standing up, and I have his head over the railing, and I'm clinging against the railing. I do not dare let him over trot. And when I get to the start, I just drop me hands. I had arms on me like Popeye by the time I got down. I just dropped me hands, and I was like, oh God, how am I going to give this little back? Well, let, I'll show you exactly how.
and all the tactics in the world. I, you had no choice, really. I just jumped out. <laughs> I just dropped my hands. I said, oh, you go. And were you going, like, I mean, you're obviously ridden loads of sprinters, but the sprinters in Australia are famously brilliant. Paddy, he broke well. And you're just kind of going, wow. I'm just, I'm just sitting against them. My back's in bits. My arms are killing me. I, I, I had a horse on me inside for the first half of Furlong, and then... Like, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? I never, see, I ne yeah. I ne I never seen another horse. Well, I watch as the camera switches here to two, and the distance on sprinters from first to last. I yeah. mean, you're still on it. I Everything look at every other it. horse pushing along. As I said, it looked cool. It looked a great ride, but I just let me stretch along. I felt, I felt the horses coming to me at the, at, the, at the furlong pole. I changed my hands. I gave them a couple of backhanders. And you didn't need to really, to be honest. He just, he just, he just sprinted away. Are you thinking about the Jubilee now? Oh, I, I, I came in, I came in, I came in. Well, the Jubilee wasn't a thing then. You know, trainers never didn't go for two races in one week with a sprinter in Ascot. But the Australian guy says, I said, geez, he, he, he won very well. He says, he'd be better next. On Saturday. Saturday. We have the freshness off him now. <laughs> so, so and you're going, she's resolved. I said, what? He said he'd be better, yeah. And he was, he was better. He was more relaxed. He'd done the same. I, I probably rolled him a little bit better in the, in the Jubilee. I, I had to think a bit, I took a pull. Were you worried about him getting the six? Because that's an extra furlong and he's so, he's so fast. Uh, I wasn't. We watched, I wasn't because we watched he, the race that we talk about it. But yeah. he, he, he hit the line really well. I was drawn a little bit out in the Jubilee. A little and, bit. And, and, and 20. I, I, <laughs> I, I kind of walked the track that day and I said, I don't want to beeline over because I'll only help them in there. I said, I'm going to go up the middle. And when from the three marker down, I let him gradually go over because I believe it used to be the, the stand side was a great advantage. So I didn't go in straight away. I just let him drift up the middle. I let them all go in out of the way. And as I said, just when I'm starting to get, they were all starting to get active. I just let him drift away, drift over from halfway. And I have to say, he was, he was, he was, he was electric. Where did you take the pull on him? Huh? Where did you take the pull on him? You said you gave a better ride, you took a pull. Whereabouts did you take this pull? Well, I didn't let him go. I, di I, I didn't just drop my hands. I gave him some little bit of a chance. And as I said, from halfway then, I let him drift over there and got the, got the inside rail. And He was a very, very good sprinter. He turned out a very good... How did you get the ride on him? I'll tell you how I got the ride on him. I, 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 um, I, I was out... Say, I didn't mean to sound so surprised <laughs> there, by the way. <laughs> I was out in Australia. I was out in Australia for when I was a kid. And I met a few people out there and they said, oh, get that Murta from okay. Ireland. And so it all pays off, those kind of like yes, putting the work in. Yes, yes, yes. And again, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty, a you pretty went, easy win. You went from well before the furlong pole and it was up a furlong in trip. Like you said, you had no doubt about him staying, but you rode him like you had no doubt about him staying either. Yeah, I did, I did. And like, yeah, I did. I thought he would stay and hey, he, he was tough. I knew if something come to him, and I had the rail, there was nothing going to get by me. You know? And was there a bit of talk, like, this is crazy, what the hell did the Aussies think to do and go for two races in a week? Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah no, got, no chance, no chance. Yeah. couldn't possibly run two rides. That's what everybody That's what everybody thought. There's no way. But as, as that's the way, you know, he said he was fresh on the first day. He ran him over five, and he said six was his trip. So that was a very, very special week, that. And that was a very, very special horse. Very fast. I should have named a bar after him. <laughs> Funny how you know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, look, from one of your great days to uh, to one, I'm not surprised. I'm a bit surprised you put this one in. Actually, one that got away. So, be interested to talk you, to talk us through this one. I went to James Fanshawe. I went over to England and I went to James Fanshawe, and I was living with Frankie. I was staying in the cottage with Frankie, and he rode the favorite hot favorite here called Refuse to Bend. And you're on Soviet song. And I'm on Soviet song, and Ruby's always given out about when you go by them, you should they shouldn't come back and get you. And Not giving out, making a statement. This is, <laughs> this is one time which I, wh where I wish I just, you just had to wait, a, a, wait a bit longer. Some, yeah. I hadn't ridden her that much. I didn't know her as well as I, 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 I got to know her a bit. And sometimes in the feet, you, you, you know, you kind of learn a lot more. Um, yeah, but right now, right, because I watched this this morning, and I still would like you to explain to me where exactly you should have sat. So as the race develops, Godolphin are in front with the white cap. Frankie's directly behind them in the first Godolphin colours that he was riding for at the time. And the gap is going to come between the Abdullah colours with the pink cap and the white cap of Godolphin. That's directly in front of you, but Frankie's going to want to get into that gap. So you keep Frankie in, so he doesn't get there. You're claiming your position. So what do you do, let Frankie out to go first, or do you keep him in? You've gone and kept him in, which to me, 
was good, right? And there you see Frankie's having to go back. You, bit of a barge and match. Johnny wins. Now Frankie's held up. I mean, this is a straight mile. How much more can you delay your challenge? You move out to get your run now. You're going to see the four. There's the two pole. You're not going for it. You're only nudging up sides. Where should you have sat? I should have just waited there. When I went outside, see, when I when I went outside, I should have waited a bit longer. I should have maybe let the, the horse on my outside come. It's a long way up there, Ruby. Like, am I, uh, I'm, a, I'm, on a, I'm on a very fast filly over a mile. He's on a Guineas winner. One eclipse over a mile and a quarter later. I got outstayed. I went too soon. And if I had it back, if I had it back again, I'd win. Yeah, I know what you mean, but that's the benefit of hindsight. I yeah, think lots this, of races it, it, differently with hindsight. And I was you living, I was living with Frankie as well, so it was it made it even more painful. So would you say that Frankie got away with it? That Frankie actually didn't ride a great race, that he had himself in a bad position, or? Well, he had a good position, and maybe if I let him go up the inside and I went round the Khaled Abdullah, he, he might have done it for speed. Yeah, and it showed later on. After that, I never, I never hit the front till inside the furlong polar anymore. She was a real hold up filly, hold up, hold up, great turn of foot. Uh, she ended up champion, champion miler, and as I said, just I'm, I'm like Ruby. When when you pass them, you should win. They shouldn't get back at you. Do you remember? Because I, I know often jockeys are awfully pessimistic or something. You you kind of remember the ones where you the, the bad ones rather than the good ones. Like do you know what I mean? You, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You do. <laughs> you do that bit. All right. I think I think jockeys, if you're not hard on yourself. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna improve. You need, you need to be. And as I said, it's Royal Ascot. Like if you leave Royal Ascot and things are not going well, it's it's a big downer because it's another year to Royal Ascot. Yeah. Right, Johnny. Next, it's your first season as stable jockey. I mean, you've had big jobs before. This is the biggest job as stable jockey to Coolmore and Haradison. Yeah, uh, Queen Anne again. I've been looking to Queen Anne. I rode him in the, I rode him in the um, lockings, and he ran away at me. And we decided, uh, we had pacemakers in this race, so we decided we'd come up the stand side. I was drawn out in 10. And this is another Aussie horse, yeah? This is another Aussie horse, yeah. I keep telling the Aussies I put them on the map when they came to <laughs> Europe, so they don't really like that. But I, 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 I decided we'd come up the stand rail. And we had a pacemaker. I was going to follow the pacemaker. Um, I wanted everything to get a little bit congested because on form, he probably wasn't the best horse in the race. But I said, if we ride him well and we get our tactics right, he's a chance. He was going very well into this race. He ran away at me in the locking, so it was important to get him settled early and to set a good tempo that he would settle. So we had a horse in front. Shamie Heffern was following me, so there was nothing going to be directly behind me. So I was going to get one chance at it. And, um, you was know, that as much to scupper everyone else's plans? Yeah. If we went up the middle, everybody had a free chance. But and that, I was and that's the race everyone else had ridden before they went out. So you just went to make sure this is a completely different race and everyone else had to react on instinct. Yeah. We knew what was happening. See, it, 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 it's easy to ride those good horses or in the big races if you, if you know what the tempo is going to be like. It's, Who's it's, riding it's, the it's hugely important. Davy. When did you give him a shout? Davy McCabe. Ah, oh, well, he knew. Did you give him a shout there now? Davy, yeah. Johnny's coming. Yeah. So Very nice of him, wasn't it? I get the, I get the run. There's a bit of bumping, a bit of barging in between them. And again, if I had the rail in Ascot sticking me right hand, I was going to outbattle anybody else. And he was so tough and he was so genuine. And it was such a good race. Finchgill, Bio, Bio, uh, Dagger Cans, Philly was good. Kieran is only coming there now. Didn't really get a run. So, best horse didn't win. Tactically wise, we were on the money. And as Ruby says, everybody had a plan. We go up the middle. I said, no, no, we're going to go over to Stan Rail. And everyone to... followed. Why, why did they all follow you? He brought them. He came well, from 10, so yeah. he's brought, the race is gone, Johnny pushed, and all of a sudden, that's where the pace is going, and they everyone's to... reacting. But they're yeah. reacting to Johnny's tune. They're all, they're all, they're all hold-up horses as well, so yeah. we knew that, well, listen, they're going to follow us. They knew we had a pacemaker in. They're all going to follow us, so we just, we just make sure it's... And is there much, is there actually chat in the race, like, or is they, like, are you roaring at them, get out of the way, or are you... Well, I said to Davey, I said, Davey, keep an eye on me. If I'm coming, if I'm outside, you come outside me. But at the two marker, I'll be coming. So make sure you keep, like, he knew. Sure, don't be in way. He never, <laughs> he never, he never really, he never really went in on the rail. He kind of left yeah. that little passage there for me. And I think that was the, the winning and losing of, of the race. Another one you picked right for, uh, for the boss was uh, MacArthur. So let's have a look at this. Well, this is very, this is very, uh, not, uh, nine out of ten times, any jockey will win on them. 
But there's that one time you think you made the difference. And I was, we were after having a great week. We were after winning four group ones. And I kept saying to Derek Smith, because it was in Derek's colours, your lad will win. Your lad will win the hard week, Derek. And Derek goes, I own them all, Johnny. Yeah, but your lad, he's running your colours, Derek. <laughs> he's running your colours. So I never was so confident going into a race as this horse. I thought this lad will win. I told Derek, this is the fella for the week. This is the best horse we have for the week. Uh, they piled on him. It's a group two. Um, he was a really, really good horse and he was flying. It went the way it was supposed to go. I was there, fifth on the rail, following the good horses into the straight. I thought he was an absolutely certainty. And, um, you know, smooth, no problem. Box seat, just wait till it's straight, Johnny. But, uh, uh, so you're sitting just, there knowing. We say fifth on the rail, like, with the gaps between first and second and third and fourth, you're about seventh on the rail. Yeah, but you're in a good position, Ruby. That, as I said to you, that's, that's the prime position in Ascot. Third, fourth, in, on the rail, one off, saving ground, not moving here now from the seven up to the, up to the three. It's important that you're sitting there, not wasting much horse, and, um, you know, just... I think Henry Cecil's horse was in front of me in the... In the um, B3 hair colours. No, or the Niarchos colours. Yes, Niarchos colours, and he, he was the main one. I would have loved to have been where John Egan was there in front of me. So I just moved out by him because he was on a bit of a no-hoper. And I, I go, here we go. All right, Johnny, just take your time. Don't panic yet. Seemed very, very easy made up a bit of ground, yeah. though, wasn't it? Like, yeah. yeah, just got away from him. Didn't want to pull me back out of the way. And as I said, here we go. Straight forward, Johnny. Derek's horse is going to win. Another winner on the board for Team Coolmore, Bally Dial, and... Derek Smith, all of a sudden, it wasn't, it, you know, the response just yeah. wasn't as... And Paddy, what went through my mind was here is, no, this cannot be happening. I remember it. This cannot be happening. And I said, no way, this cannot happen. This cannot happen to this horse, for this man on this day. And I just... Got after him. I just... You lifted it. <laughs> just gave him no option. Just and and again, it was it was that it was. And did you know at that stage that the horse is going to go point to point and after? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he still point to point, but I was just. Uh, do you? And that's where you can never get too ahead of yourself. Is that relief or well done? I did well. No, there, that is relief. Yeah. That, you, that's just to remind you again. You can never get too too ahead of yourself, or never think that they're going to bring their brilliant best from the work in the morning to the track. There's always a chance that they'll change their legs or they'll run a bit flat. Or, so it just gave me a great, a great, um, great insight to every day is, or every horse has to be ridden to their best. You have to ride them really, really well. And I said, I believe nine times out of ten, most jockeys will win them. But that time I felt the last half of furlong, I just couldn't let it happen. On a, a similar theme to couldn't not let it happen. That's the right, the right phraseology. Uh, Yates's fourth Gold Cup. I remember this well, and I mean, the race is so long, we can watch while I'm telling you my, my completely pointless anecdote. Uh, so this is quite a moment for me as well, because I was approached by the BBC before this to, because uh, I had an Irish accent, to record the voiceover of some WB Yates poem, which they played in the preamble and the build up to the race. And I can't even remember what poem it was anyway, but there you go. So this is a special moment for me. And actually when he won, it was probably the closest thing on the flat that you'd see to like a Cheltenham winner or that kind of stuff, you know, it was a pretty special moment. But Yates was freaking nature, wasn't he? Yeah, well, you know, it was a hu huge horse. Um, again, a bit like Royal Rebel, came alive at Ascot. Had a terrible run beforehand in Navan. Uh, we, we were, uh, I, I was over with Aidan, we ran a Vintage ran crop stakes, isn't it? Vintage crop stakes. We were, in, uh, we were in France and we're coming back in the plane and I heard Aidan on the phone to Seamus Heffernan. And yes, Seamus, yes, Seamus. And I knew it wasn't a great kind of conversation, you know. Uh, I said, well, how'd Yates get on? Expect them to say, oh, I finished second. Uh, Seamus said he finished sixth, Johnny. But the ground was very bad. I said, sixth, Dayton? He said, don't worry, we'll start training them now, Johnny. <laughs> like, that's three weeks before Royal Ascot. Yeah. I said, all right, Aiden, yeah, Aiden, right, yeah, Aiden. He knows a thing or two about so, training, I guess. Um, I wrote him a piece of work before Ascot, and he was really going well. 
he was really going well and I said uh, won't be beaten now he was still a short price favourite despite that prep run yes, he was 64 yes. or something but he did yeah. like he did he did work really well the week before Ascot uh, I have to say I was as nervous on this race as I've ever been in a race I really wanted the horse to win the year before I was nervous because Kieran Fallon had won the first one on him Mick Cannan had won the second one on him and I was first job in Ballydoy, so I really wanted the horse to, to win to say, well, geez, I'm as good as those guys anyway, or I won on them the same as the lads. But this was different. No horse had done it before. Four Ascot Gold Cups. Um, his run was bad. His work was good. But when he came out under the tunnel Ascot and he went to the start, I nearly knew then. He just came out. He, he, he grew a foot and he went to the start so well. And there was, there was, there was. I think Michael Stout had a young stayer here called Pat Kai, who was on the way up. And the Sudsky colours there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was on the way up, and he was the one I had to beat. And Jimmy Fortune was there inside me there, and he says, uh, "We're going down past Swindley Bottom." He says, "Gee, Johnny, we're going quick for a two and a half mile race." And I just looked in and I said, Jimmy, we're going to be going a lot quicker now in a minute when I let this guy go because <laughs> I said, I ain't hanging around. This lad stayed... And, that's, and you were being honest there, you weren't like... Oh, yeah, I wasn't. Them, like, yeah. I said, my lad stayed really well. The Ascot Gold Cup is special, two and a half mile. Not many horses yeah. get that last half a mile. That's like the marathon. Is yes, it? Just, you yes. Just either get it, it's just one of them. Yeah. Because like, so, you have to be fast enough to get there. Like there's me, I, I, said, I want to say that to Jimmy there now. And I just pulled out three wide. I don't usually do that, but I just said, right, I'm off here. I'm not hanging about. I'm going to really make this into a, 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 a test of stamina. And when I turned in, like I went, I went probably two furlongs too soon. Did you though? Because watch it again. I think it was the winning of it for you. You've moved up on the outside of Frankie in the Navy. Now keep an eye on the chestnut horse with the white face, Ryan Moore on Pakai. Johnny's starting to wind up to go and he has set sail off the bend. But keep watching the runner up. Watch what happens to him here now. You're going, Johnny, so you're starting to get, watch your tail to the chestnut horse's nose, and you watch how far you end up in front of him before he gets out. Yeah, well, I did, I did think the staying power was going to win it for me, and, and I had to make it into a real slog. Now, I went early, and he was a bit lonely in front, but the crowd was unbelievable this day. Like, they, they just, you could hear them. And um, so it's getting tough now. He's hanging over the rail a little bit. I can hear the crowd getting a bit. I said, oh, there's something coming. I look in the big screen. And when I had a look in the big screen, I knew I was going to get home. And sure, like, I only had to push him out hands and heels, really. And just there, oh, I just wanted that horse. I wanted, it to, I wanted to win for that horse so badly. It was good for me, too, but for that horse to win that race. Um, history. Uh, Evan had gone on before, and Aidan O'Brien's just a genius at getting horses ready for Ascot. He just, he just knows how to get them there. Right up there, one of the great days uh, in my career, I just was so happy for the horse that he, he did it. And a bit of a character too, you know. Should we discuss Johnny's celebration, Ruby, or? Is that, thank you, or I'm as good as he? Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I was very lucky in my life. Someone must have been looking after me, so. I have to give a bit of thanks every now and again. Right, that was all a, a big warm up to uh, obviously the reason why we're here today <laughs> is to, <laughs> to talk about soul power and um, obviously very special for me and my family. I'm contractually obliged to remind you that soul power ran in 50 group races, 30 of them group ones, which I believe is a European record for for a sprint journey. I believe means I know. <laughs> yeah, well, so dad tells me, and I haven't checked it, but I guarantee it is. He tells me about three times a week and um, uh, and, and also was obviously a hugely successful Irish sprinter. Brilliant for our family. Like, I would imagine pretty exciting to ride. And this day at Royal Ascot, I mean, I'll get ready to pre press play now. We'll get going in a minute. But this day at Royal Ascot, Dave Mason, who used to lead the horse up and around the parade ring, said to me, that you said to him on the way out, just when you're about to let you go under the tunnel, something along the lines of like, watch this, Dave, I'll either be a hero or I'll be sacked. And you had you'd made your mind up what you were going to do, but no one knew. No, Eddie was there. Um, Eddie Lyon was very good to me at that time because I was starting to train then and I wasn't getting many rides. So Eddie was sticking on me with soul, uh, soul power. Um, I'd, had mi I'd missed on him a few times. I think Ruby said I only won a couple of races on him and I'd missed on a lot of big races. By just getting there, just getting there too soon, he was a horse with a great turn of foot. But you had to, he was like a coiled spring. You just had to pull him back and pull him back and pull him back 
up on the heels, pull them back, and then let them go. So I'd made up my mind that today is the day. There's loads of pace on. Johnny, you cannot get beaten today by coming too soon. You have to wait, you have to be brave. And it, I didn't even tell Eddie Lyon, Eddie picked up the saddle. And I, he goes, yeah, Evan, it's going well. Ah, don't worry, Eddie. He says, you leave it to me, Eddie. You leave it to me, Eddie. I didn't tell anybody. And then in the ring, I said, yeah, I'll give him a chance there. I'll hold him up a little bit and come with a run. Yeah, yeah, everybody was pretty happy. But for, for your parents, who, look, who, 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 you know, again, loved the horse so much, Eddie, who trained him so well, Eddie's family, and just for the little horse himself. He was tiny, isn't he? Yeah, he was tiny, tiny, but he was so fast. He was so genuine. Like I said to people, I was just so genuine. He wanted to please you all the time. So the biggest job was you had to miss the beat and get on the heels. And if you got on the heels and went in behind one, he was great. But if you even, if you, if you just went boo, he was gone. That's the way he was. So you just had to really sit on him and ease him back, ease him back, ease him back. But he had a great electric turn of foot. And today, or this day, it proved what a champion he was because, you know, it, he made up a lot of ground. I've never, I've never asked you about, about was the race itself because Shea Shea was the favourite on the far side. But you, you actually, we don't even get a mention until the last stride, basically. But so Soul Power was drawn somewhere in the middle, right? Uh, where is he? Yeah. There he, there he is with this, uh, the yeah, red and white stripes, yeah. as usual. But the, the pace all kind of happened on the far side. But you said earlier that you always thought you're better off up the stand side in a sprint. Was that in your head now? I, yeah, I always liked so this. You were I, planning even then, I'm going to go stand yeah, side. I was always comes. planning to go stand side. At the start, you see him. He just jumps out. He wants to give yeah. you evidence. But now when you're in behind, like not many horses pull in a five furlong race. But the pace he had, he'd be well tanking with you. So, they had to, so the faster they went early, the better it was for him. If they went slow and the quick in front of you, he was never going to catch them. But if, you, if they went fast and they started dying in front of you, when he passed one, he really... But even here, you're not going. You're not going. You're just keeping pulling him in behind, pulling him behind, pulling him all the way over to just, just to get one uninterrupted run, is it? Yeah, that's it. Now, now is the time to let him go. Now, I had all these beat this side, but when I did look over, the horse was kind of a length or two clear on the far side. But the turn of foot... Yeah. Like you don't ride horses, you don't many ride many horses like him with that turn of foot. You don't ride many horses that travel so sweetly in five furlong races because usually, like Schwazier, you see him, you got to the, to the furlong and a half and you kicked him and he just grinded out. But this lad, he was small, he was so genuine, and if you could just, if you could just wait and deliver him at the right time, which, look at him, even can't even pull him up after the race, he still wants to go. But can he was. We watch, uh, watch that again. Yeah, let's watch it again. I want to tell you, the viewing platform for this, for the owners and trainers, is, um, is beyond the finish line. So you're looking back at it at a bad angle, right? I'm sitting there at mum, mum smoking about 40 cigarettes during the, the one minute of the race, or whatever, the 50 odd seconds. And, and uh, she's at the back of the thing and she can't really see the screen. And I'm trying to describe it to her. So I can't see him, mum. I can't see him, mum. Eyes, he's towards the back. He's coming, but he's too late. Too late. Oh, geez, he's oh, oh, he's so unlucky. He was second. And then I just I looked up at the big screen and I saw the still. I said, mummy, f one. And she goes, Paddy, your language. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Johnny, you said you were riding him to have one challenge, right? So are you watching the opposition or are you looking for the furlong pole, the 150? What's in your head as to when you're going to go? Is it the opposition I'm kind of what, uh, or distances? I'm kind of watching the opposition and I kind of seen Adam Kirby here. See him on the, he, he rode one of Clive Cox's down this side. And I thought he was the one, he's there uh, just in front of the, of the blue colours. I thought he was the one that I had to beat. So that's what I was looking at. Uh, I don't know if you look at four mark. You kind of know where you are. Do you, do you, do you yeah, understand? I know what you, you know? mean. But you know what your body language? You're niggling, niggling, niggling. There's got the, the furlong, furlong pole. pole here. Now you go. Yeah, but I knew I, I, I knew I had him. I knew I had him covered. And I gave him a quick couple of flicks. And now I see your man on the far side. Then you just go harder. <laughs> and now, oh, I knew I won. Because the horse didn't know there's another horse way yeah, over there. No, did he? no, he didn't see him. I knew I won. And then I said, I'm Are we sure you'd won? I'm looking at the big screen saying, I hope I won. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great story because we got we had great times with that horse. We had great times Dubai and yeah. Hong Kong and he brought us he brought us around the world. Yeah, I, 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 but as I said, on this day, like if he didn't get up, like why are you coming in and say, gee Johnny, you gave him a bit to do or you gave him too much to do, but yes, I just, they did. Sorry. Well you just <laughs> but, you, now, but, you, to but, be fair, you know exactly what, what my old man would have been saying. You're just a bit unlucky you're on this side because you're all the pace on the other side. They would've, he would have yeah. made it easy for you. He would, yeah. but like Eddie, Eddie Lydum says to me, now that you're a trainer, when the jockey comes in and says, don't worry, bud, 
I'll win in the next time for you. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I used to say to him. Yeah. Don't worry, Eddie. I'll win the next time. But we, as we said earlier, there's one Ascot. There's yeah. one King Stand Stakes. Yeah. You have to wait another year. But that's what I used to say to Eddie. And when I think of it, like, I don't know how he put up me. Well, there you go. It was a great... Idea. He was good towards the end of your career as well, wasn't he? Ah, he was great, yeah. You. Yeah. No, I was, as I said, I was training a bit then and I wasn't getting that many rides. and um, Probably enjoyed a bit more. Enjoyed a bit more. And the people that come in, they enjoy... The joy in your face was nearly... So I gave you a big kiss. Yeah, you were kissing me and <laughs> hugging me. and <laughs> Like your mum your your and your dad. Out. Like The joy in their face when you come in, it was, it was yeah, special. It's great times. And when you, when, only when you look back and you see it, it brings back the memories again. It was yeah. brilliant. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, if that doesn't whet your appetite for Royal Ascot, I don't know what will. So Johnny Murta, the legend that is, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Paddy. Thank you, Ruby.